Hey guys, we're about to jump into the message today, but before we do, special announcement, Transformation Church Conference. That is right, we are getting so close. It is coming up September 10th through the 12th. Listen, you need to get your tickets. This is gonna be an amazing time. It's Transformation Conference version one. What do we mean by that? We mean that you can start right where you are, putting out the first version, the first iteration, even if it's rough, even if it's not all the way put together, we believe that you're gonna get something so special out of this conference. Go to our website, our social media, our app, get your ticket today, because it's going to be amazing. But for now, let's jump to the message. Is anybody ready for the word this morning? They're not ready. Is anybody ready for the word this morning? All right, okay. All right, y'all ready? All right, so I, um, I'm excited. And y'all know I'm excited when my leg starts doing this. I don't know why, but it just starts doing this. I'm excited because we are starting part three of a series that we're calling Help Me Crazy. Now say it like you mean it. This series is honestly probably my favorite series I've ever preached. Not because it's the easiest topic to talk about, because it has the potential to transform so many lives. And one of the things that people do not understand is how much faith is a part of the cornerstone, the foundation of everything you have to do as a believer in Jesus Christ. And so we've talked about this idea of crazy faith. And I wanna give you, if this is your first time watching or joining us in the building, I wanna give you this working definition of crazy faith. Write this down. Crazy faith are thoughts and actions that lack reason, but trusting fully in what you cannot explicitly prove. See, crazy faith is like, hey, this don't make full sense. Like when I'm looking in my natural, like when I'm looking at the the, the facts, this don't make sense. But for some reason, I believe that this can happen. For some reason, even though the doctors gave me this report, I believe that I can walk in healing. For some reason, I know I haven't done all of the things that qualify me for this position, but after I had that interview, I just feel like that's mine. Did I come to the right church this morning? What I'm telling you is there's a level that you can live in God that it does not make complete sense, but you fully believe what you cannot prove. And what we've been talking about is this is where all of the people we read about in the Bible, this is where they lived, at crazy faith. Noah building an ark. It had never rained. Abraham Abraham believing with his wife for a baby at 75 and, and, and hoping that it could come to pass. David thinking that he could defeat Goliath. These were all things that at the time seemed completely crazy. But remember this fact. It's only crazy until it happens. And what was crazy in one season, people will count as faith. So I've been trying to move us through this whole thing where we understand, yes, the goal is crazy faith. But crazy faith starts with baby faith. And if you would just have the faith the size of a mustard seed, just a little bit. To believe God said you could speak to all kinds of stuff and tell it to move. You could speak to cancer. You could speak to the bad attitude that you've been having this morning when you woke up and everything was wrong. You could say, hold on. It's not who I am. I'm a child of God and I speak faith and life and death is in the power of my tongue. And I'm not going to cuss you out even though I want to. Y'all hear what I'm saying? But he just says you got to have a little faith. But, but. But as we've started through this, it's, it's raised a lot of questions. A lot of questions in people that, that are trying to like, all right, God, I, I'm trying to move in faith. And Pastor Mike, you're saying some stuff, but I need you to bring some clarity. So today I want to answer a few questions that people have been having about this topic on faith. And I think it has the opportunity to change your life. People keep asking me questions like this. How do you know, Pastor Mike? How do you know you're moving in faith? Like, I don't want to waste time and like go the wrong direction. How do I know? And then they ask stuff like this, and how are you confident that what you are believing in faith, that it's done? Like, how do you do that? And the last question they keep asking is, how can you be sure that the thing you're believing for is going to happen? Like, how? I'm about to give y'all the greatest point that you've ever gotten in your life. Listen, how do you know? How do you know what you're believing for? How do you know that you're moving in faith? You can't. It's not faith 
if you could figure it out. No, I need to help somebody understand this because you're standing paralyzed because you want to know and be assured and sure that everything's going to be okay. You can't. Let me help you understand this. Faith begins where understanding ends. When you don't know, that's where faith starts. When God called you and said, you're supposed to go to this college. Well, how am I going to pay for it? That's where faith starts. Like, like, well, the doctor gave us this bad report. What are we going to do? We don't have insurance to pay for this. And that, that's where faith starts. Where your understanding ends is where faith begins. And what most of us try to do is we want to understand it all before we start moving in faith. And you've been paralyzed your entire Christian life. Had faith enough for salvation, but have not had faith enough to move beyond where you're at. And so you live in an in a area of existence instead of dominance, instead of the provided life that God has for you. And I'm trying to shake somebody and let you know that where you're at and what you're dealing with and what God is calling you, you to will never be a sure thing at the beginning. Look at him. Y'all, y'all sitting here like, oh, God, this is not what I wanted to hear. I, what I told somebody in the back is I said, I would rather people understand how faith actually works than for you guys to be excited about what can happen. Oh, God can do a miracle and God can move the mountains and God can give you the home and God can deliver you and God can give you the keys and you never get keys. Will it ever work in your life? Will it ever happen for your family? Because it's easy to come in here and celebrate when it happens for the church and for somebody else. But how do we practically put our faith in action? And you cannot put faith in action if you have to understand it all before you move in faith. There will always be, everybody say, a gap. There will always be a gap between your abilities and the promise of God. There will always be a gap between what you can network your way into and the thing that God has called you to be. Because this whole Christian life is for you to be dependent on God. For you to trust him. And this is us having faith in God. So the title of today's message is something that's going to help you. It's, it's not crazy faith. It's not baby faith. But what if God can still work in maybe faith? No, because isn't that how we live our life? Like, like maybe this is going to work. Like, maybe I was supposed to be here. Maybe I married the right person. Like, you going to act like you was 100% sure? When you made that move, when you said, I do, you're going to act like you was 100% sure. Nobody's 100% sure. What you're doing is you're stepping out on faith and you're saying, maybe this is you, God. Maybe you're going to provide for me right here. Maybe you're going to do something. And so many believers stay paralyzed in their purpose because they don't know if God can use their maybe faith. But today I came to tell you that we serve a God that doesn't need a lot. All he needs is just a little bit of your faith. And I want you to write this down because some of you have lost hope and has lost faith in what God's saying, but you've had it backwards. Look at this. Faith is not found in what you are believing for. Faith is found in who you are believing in. See, the problem is most of us like, well, I believe for the house and then the house, they, they, they sold it to somebody else. And so I guess I didn't have enough faith. No, 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 no. You put your faith in the house instead of the giver of the house. And, and, and the reason that God didn't let you get that house is because he knows your future. And he knew that that house was too much for you to buy right now. And you would be in foreclosure in two years. And he also knew that in two years, he was going to move you to another state. And because his protection, you prayed that he would protect you and guide your step. He closed that door. It wasn't that your faith didn't work. He, your faith was working to protect you into something. And he knew you were going to move to another place. And you wanted to move to that place because that's where your spouse is at. And he wanted you to get to that place so your husband or your wife could be able to find you and you're sitting here thinking that my faith didn't work and God said your faith is working right now and the thing you got to understand with this is when God's doing something that you can see he's working but the same God when you don't see it he's still working 
and, and, and the problem with most of us, if we do not have faith in the who, we have faith in the what. So if I don't see the healing like I wanted to see, I, I'm, I'm, oh, I lost faith because th that loved one passed away. He healed them. I know this messes with people's theology. He healed them. He just healed them in heaven. No more sickness, no more pain, no, no more worry. He healed. But, but we think for some reason we lost and God said your perspective of it is all wrong. He said, I need somebody to see like I see. You got to get your faith out of the what and put your faith in the who. And my faith is in God and your faith should be in God. And that's why when things don't go your way, put your faith back in the who. Because my Bible says God is working all things together for the good of those who, like, either you believe that or you don't. So a L is not really a loss. It turns into a lesson because even when I go through something that looks unfavorable to me, even when they leave us, even when they go away, God says, I'll use all of it. Y'all don't believe it over here. God says, I'll use all of it. And that's why, and, and that's why most people won't even get past salvation when it comes to faith. You just had enough faith to ask God to keep you out of hell. I got my get out of hell free card. And God says, is that where, is that all? It, Salvation is the starting line of the Christian life. Dealing with sin and not sin, like, is this a sin? Is this a, that is the first, like the first part of dealing with Christian life. And 80% of the people in this room is stuck right here when the promise of God is over there. But we won't have faith to believe beyond where we're at right now. And so let me help you because some of y'all are sitting here looking at me. Let me give you some Bible. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 38. It says, and the righteous ones, my righteous ones. Another translation say, and the just. People who have put their faith in Jesus Christ. They will live by faith. Sorry, boo-boo. You don't have an option. If you are saved, the prerequisite, the fine print of salvation is guess what? You now have to live by faith. So there will always be a gap between your job providing for you and what you really need because the saved ones, the just ones, the righteous ones shall live by faith. And this is the stuff nobody tells you. It's like, oh, your miracle's on the way. Everything is coming. Claim it. It's your season. But you've been saying that same thing for 10 years. It's because the miracle is waiting on you. It's not, is the miracle here? Is God out of supply? It's are you out of faith? Let me step back over here. If you are a believer, there will always be a gap between what you have and what you need. Ask Paul. Because if anybody could get a pass on this, it should be somebody who wrote, a third of the Bible. You, you, I mean, Paul, Paul, I mean, literally, he's seen miracles, y'all. Paul was killing Christians like pow, 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 pow. Gangster killing Christians. Has a Damascus Road experience. Goes blind for a few days. Has, has somebody put spit, or, or not spit, but touch his eyes. And, and he goes to see, and then he starts ministering the gospel. He literally has seen miracles. He's going around speaking all these words, and then he comes to this place in his own life. Like many of us, no matter what you do, no matter if you're on a platform, no matter if God's using you in great ways in your company or your business, there will always be an area that you are deficient. And that gap is for faith to fill it. And what ends up happening is, obviously, obviously Paul has faith. And so in 2 Corinthians um, um, chapter, let's go, 2 Corinthians chapter um, 12, verse 8, he asked Jesus three times, hey, listen, I got this issue. 
that's kind of like a thorn in my side. And they never tell us what it really is. It could be an addiction. It could have been some anger issues. It could have been all kinds of things. But he said, I got this thorn. Could you please take this away? And God was like, nah, 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 nah. You look better with that. You're more attractive to me when you're dependent on me. He said, I could take this thing away from you easy. He said, but right now my grace is is all you need. It's sufficient for you right now. So I'm going to let you stay with this gap so faith can fill it. Because every day you wake up, you need to understand that, that maybe it's God who's sustaining you. And maybe it's God who got you into that position that you didn't qualify for. And maybe it's the grace of God that empowers you to live a different life. It's maybe faith. Like, like, it's maybe I can't do this without God. Yeah, yeah. And so all of us have to get to this point where we can realize that we have to trust completely in who God is and what he's called us to do. But look at the end of Hebrews 10, 38. Because my question is to you is, what are you filling your gap with? Some of y'all are trying to fill the gap with talent, with networking. If I just know a few more people, then, then, then what God has for me. No, baby. Come on. Some of us are trying to fill it with money and things. And, and God said, the only fulfillment for this is that you have faith in me, that you, you would trust me, that I would provide for you every day. Ask the children of Israel. The children of Israel, they, 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 they didn't really have a full understanding of what God was trying to do in their life. He, he told them, like, I'll provide for you every day. And so he started letting manna from heaven, that was their food, rain down. But what they didn't understand is that there was only enough anointing in the manna for the day. Like it was only for that one day. And so people who would try to store it up and and save some for the next day, it would rot and have maggots in it because God was trying to tell everybody and give a sign to us right now that I am the God that will supply your need every single day. Day. I'm the God that you need to have faith in every single day. But I can tell the people in the back trust their plan more than his purpose. I can tell there's thousands of people watching right now th- that you would rather become independent than dependent on God. Come on, let's be honest. You used to pray more when you were desperate. Come on, let's, when you didn't have the money. When, 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 you, when you didn't have the job, when you didn't have the connections, when your children were, when you were praying to have children, you were more desperate. But sometimes the blessings of God make us self-sufficient and we no longer depend and trust on them anymore. And that's why there always is a gap between where you are and what you can do and the purpose that God has called you to. Ah. So, so, so look at the bottom half of this scripture. It says, and my righteous ones are the just will. Everybody say will. will. You have no option. You're, you're going to live by faith. But it says, but I will take no pleasure in anyone who turns away from faith. What does it look like when you're a believer, but you don't have any faith in the God you say you believe in? He said, I, I don't take no pleasure in that. So if this is like the cornerstone of our faith, we need to understand and figure this faith thing out. So let's go back to the beginning, to the father of our faith. His name is Abram, okay? And and this is his version one. Um, Shameless plug for a conference we're having September 10th through the 12th, right here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Um, Let's look at it right now. Um, Chapter 12, verse 1, it says, Now the Lord had said to Abraham, who said it? I said, who said it? This is very key when you start talking about faith because a lot of people want to take their thoughts and then paste the Lord on top of them. Like they want to act like that relationship was from God. (laughs) And and, and it started out nasty and started out wrong and started out bad. And this proves to me that that Abram had a devotion life with God, that, that 
that if you don't get anything else from my teaching or this church, all I'm asking you to do is have a daily devotion with God, time that you set aside where you wait on God, you read his word, you listen to worship music, because Pastor Mike may be your favorite preacher, and such and such may be the person that speaks to you in a good, encouraging way, but nobody can talk to you like God can. Nobody can pinpoint your situation, your dysfunction, your hurts, your pain, the stuff you keep from every... I'm trying to help somebody. Nobody can get you right like God can. And so many of us want self-help and want to read a book and want to find, but they didn't create you. They don't know you. They don't know. And I'm telling you, Abram had a devotion life because it was a conversation where he was speaking to God and God was speaking back to him. Well, Pastor Mike, is God speaking in an audible voice? Most of the time, not. He speaks through his word where he left left a love letter for us that they wrote this stuff thousands of years ago and it's still applying to your broken life today how does that happen except by the spirit of God he also speaks through others and you got to listen to who you have around you that actually finds themselves in this book as well I don't want to listen to you just because you have money because you will lead me down a path that has nothing to do with my purpose I need to listen to some I'm preaching already I'm I need to listen to people who have sought God. And this is where we find out. People try to move out on faith, but they're not finding it from the Father. And that's why it says, now the Lord said to Abram. (laughs) He said, watch what he told him to do. Because this is like the basics of faith. He says, go away from your country. Huh? And from your relatives. No, not big mama. And from your father's house, huh? To the land which I will show you. I'm not about to even tell you where you're going. How many people in this room and watching online, they don't like to get in cars or go anywhere until they know where the destination is? Come on, let's be honest. You're a control freak. That's what you are. You need deliverance. But many of us, we're not just hopping in and riding. Where are we going? How long is it going to take to get there? What happens when God gets in the driver's seat of your life? And the only thing he says is buckle up. Where are we going? Buckle up. Who's going to be there? Buckle up. And this is essentially what he tells Abram. He said, leave everything you know. Leave your country. That means leave comfortability. Leave the place where everybody speaks my language and I know the customs and the culture. Leave my comfortability. And your relatives, leave what's familiar. Like, leave the thing that I've been raised around and this is just how it is. And It says, leave your father's house, which represented provision and protection. You mean if I'm stepping out in faith? Like, this is telling me a lot in like four little lines. Like, if I'm actually going to live by faith, that means faith will be uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah, no, everybody in here is like, yeah, I'm a man of faith. I'm a woman of faith. Faith is going to be uncomfortable. That means if you're comfortable, you're not in faith. See, I'm going to say it reverse because some of y'all, it didn't hit you when I said it the first time. If you're sitting around thinking like, yeah. Life is good. Money's good. Kids are good. I look good. There may be an area that God's whispering you, come out deeper. Step out and believe me again. No, come on, baby. There's more for you back here. And you're like, oh, no, 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 God, you've already done it. (laughs) I'm 45. I'm retired. Kids are good. Family's good. (laughs) I look good. (laughs) And and, and uncomfort or being uncomfortable is a sign that faith can work. (sighs) So, So we're learning from Abram right now. Faith will be uncomfortable. The second thing, faith will be unfamiliar. Some of y'all won't do nothing that you don't know. Now, how you gonna know something new if you won't do it? Well, I, you know, that's just not my group of people. How could they ever become your group of people? 
well, that's just not, you know, that's just not how I get down. How do you get down? <laughs> and, and what I'm saying is when you start walking in faith, you're going to have to learn and talk and read about stuff that is unfamiliar. Yeah. You're going to have to talk to people that don't have none of your cultural background. You're going to have to stand in places and declare what God said when nobody else believes it. It's going to be unfamiliar. And faith will require new provision. See, most of us, if we've seen God move before, we want him to move the same way the next time. So last time I prayed. I fasted for two days, and then he answered. So this time, I need a miracle, so I'm going to pray. I'm going to fast for two days, and I'm going to get that miracle again. And then when you get there, and it's like, eh. <laughs> Why didn't that work? God's left me. He said, no. You pinned me to a formula. <laughs> and I want you to walk by faith. If I did it the same way every time, you wouldn't have to have faith to do that. That's why Jesus healed some people by speaking the word. He healed some people by touching them. He healed some people by taking mud and putting spit in it and tell them to go. He healed different ways because it took faith. I'm trying to help you. You're wondering why, why is the dream not coming to pass? Because you want to be comfortable. You want it to be provided for the same way it was provided before. You want it to be familiar. And the last thing you got to understand about faith, faith will force vulnerability. You can't be safe in faith. When I, when I, when I drew that, that picture of the Spirit Bank Event Center five years ago, and the first line said, the Spirit Bank Event Center will be Transformation Church. That was one level of faith. But do you want to know when my faith became vulnerable? It's when I took that piece of paper and I showed it to another human being. Because at that moment, my faith was vulnerable. Either they were going to be like, this boy done lost his mind. Or, wow, maybe God can. And it's very, very important who you talk to and who you are surrounded with when you're in a season of maybe faith. Y'all better hear me. The people that have been your besties don't have the words for what God's about to take you into. The people who've been talking behind your back, you don't need their approval. You need somebody to bear down and believe with you. Ah. But if you're going to walk in faith, you're going to be naked out here. Here it is. Stretch marks and all. You hear me? You, you. There's no way to be safe and be fully in faith. And that's why you want to guarantee and God says, I ain't giving it. Because you're trusting in the what when you should be trusting in the who. So, so Abram gets this word which is real daunting. Like, hey, leave your country, leave your family, leave your house and provision. And okay, God, I got you because I, I got a little bit of faith. Must have seen where I'm going. I'll show you when you move. Go to the land that I will show you. Start the business that I will show you. Move to the place that I will show you. Start serving in the church. What area? I'll show you. See, faith is moving and allowing God to direct your step. The problem is it's so much easier to move something, an object that is in motion. And what's happening is many of us are standing still wanting God to move us. Brent, come here real fast. I need y'all to see this real quick. This is most of us in our faith. And we're saying, all right, I have faith. My promise is over there. But I'm currently right here. And we're like, all right, God, take me in faith. And we want God to pick us up. <laughs> oh, God. We literally want him to pick us up and move us to the promise. But Brent, just walk slowly. It's much easier to push somebody towards faith when they've already taken a step. What you're waiting on is for God to move. And God said, if you would just move, ah, I 
God would take you and push you and direct you into purpose. Somebody needs to give God praise right there. I hope you're getting this. So right now, Abram's faced with a, with a hard decision. I'm going to stay comfortable or I'm going to move in faith. But this is some encouragement for somebody. The pain of faith is always anchored by the promise of faith. God never gives you all of these directives that seem so sacrificial if what he wants to do on the other side of it is not even more amazing. So he literally tells him, you got to leave all this stuff in faith and go to the land that I will show you. But look at verse 2. But he says, and I'll make your name great. He says, I will bless you abundantly. He says, and make your name great. That's exalted and distinguished. And you shall be a blessing, a source of great good to others. Isn't that the point? That God would bless you so much that when people are in need that you see at Quick Trip, when, when you just get a win, you don't even have to know them. But God would be able to make you the answer to somebody's prayer instead of saying, I'll pray for you. No, I'm here. <laughs> like, you don't, uh, y'all don't hear me. Like, will you pray with me? Here's your answer. What do you need? I can be used by God in this moment. And he says, I'll make you that type of person. He said, I will curse. That is subject to my wrath and judgment. The ones who curse you. That means you don't have to defend yourself. When you're walking in faith, you don't got to go to Twitter and Facebook and defend what God is doing. God says, if they curse you, they better watch out. If they talk about you, they better watch out. I got top flight security with me all the time. You hear me? He says, and in you, all the families of the nation of the earth will be blessed. We're sitting in the blessing of Abraham's faith step right now. So now Abraham has a decision to make. Like, is this God? Am I 100% sure I heard the voice of the Lord? Maybe. Maybe. Like, maybe this is him. Or maybe it was that taco I ate last night. Can we be real? But I spend enough time with him that I feel like this is beyond me. Like, 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 my, this is where I end. <laughs> and, and we know that we're understanding ends, faith. So, so God, you're asking me to step over into something else that don't make no sense and I don't understand this thing. Look what happens in verse 4. It says, so Abraham departed. Now, I want you to look at the posture of Abraham when he departed. He just heard, leave your family, leave your comfortability, leave everything that's provided for you, leave it. Abraham didn't do this. Dang! <laughs> Dang, God! Shoot. He, he didn't leave angry. He didn't leave crying. Oh, my God. Pookie, Ray Ray. And he didn't even leave prideful. God about to bless me. I'm leaving y'all. Forget your church. Forget your business. God about to make me a ruler over nations. What? You going to work for me one day. Because many of us leave our last season thinking it's about others when God is trying to build your faith in, oh, y'all not. And so you're doing it trying to prove something, and God's trying to improve something in you. Uh. Look how he left, though. So he departed. And in my mind, Abram was like, I got to go. Like, this ain't even time. Like, you know when somebody's like fast walking? Like, like, he departed. He was like, oh, shoot. I got to. <laughs> it's like the people you see in the mall if you go at 6 a.m. and then people walking in the mall. <laughs> I just, for me, I just feel like he had to get out of there. How do you know? Because he said he departed in faithful obedience. Yeah. Like, I don't know if this is going to work. Maybe it will. But I'm going to be faithful or full of faith. I'm going to be faithful. I'm going to trust in God. And I'm just going to be obedient as the Lord has directed him. Who directed him? The Lord. 
this is where I just want to let you know, do not make a plan. And then just go do it. Because God's grace is sufficient. And he'll protect you and he'll save you. But when you move outside of the will of God, he cannot prevent all the scars. And so a lot of people are like, if God's good, his grace is going to cover. Yes. But you'll have some cuts that you were never meant to have. That if you would just stay in his will, and it might not be in your timetable, and it not, might not be how you want it and who you thought it was coming through. But our goal is to be faithfully obedient. Somebody say faithful, faithful. and obedient. Okay, so Pastor Mike, why aren't more people living by faith? If it's that big of a deal for us, why aren't people living by faith? And I really honestly think it's because people think that their doubt disqualifies their faith. Because you hear in scriptures like, you have, to, you have to believe and not doubt. And then it'll come to pass. And like we're in this like human experience like... It's like it like comes with my flesh suit that like sometimes I doubt like, dang, I don't know if that's going to happen. And like, I don't know. And so what the enemy does is at the moment you doubt, he tries to come and reinforce it and say, that's right. You're doubting. You don't believe God. Your prayers don't even work. This doesn't even happen. And this is what I, I have to believe in this moment is that doubt is a part of this fallen world. Like, there are going to be moments that we doubt. Right. Pa- Pastor, I just don't believe that. Jesus doubted. Can I prove it to you? Uh-huh. He was one-third, one-third of the planning committee for this whole idea to save humanity. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. But when he gets in the garden, and it's about 24 hours before he's about to go to the cross, he's sitting in the garden of Gethsemane and saying, guys, I think I made a wrong plan. I'm doubting what you, I know we talked about this before. I know that I said, let's do it. I'm going to go down. I'm going to die the death that they couldn't die. And then I'm going to raise again. But uh, maybe, maybe there's another way. But nevertheless, not my, oh, y'all better hear me. Not my will. But yours, be, I want my purpose more than I want my pleasure. I, ah, I want my purpose more than I want to live in this idea of a Christian life. He was all God and all human, so God had to put in there a moment where he doubted. But he responded to the doubt in faith. That... This don't feel right, but maybe, maybe this plan is going to work. Maybe if I just do it, maybe somebody in 2019 will be in a church hearing this word and maybe it'll be the thing that saves their life. Let me help you. The opposite is faith of faith is not doubt. It's fear. The opposite of faith is not doubt. It's fear. And I'm going to prove it to you because some of y'all sitting there still looking at me. Look at Mark chapter (laughs) 4. Thank you, Lord. It says, as evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, let's cross to the other side of the lake. Who told them to cross? I said, who told them to cross? This is the same Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end. The one who would not tell them to cross if he did not know that they were going to make it across. Now, I want you to just keep that in your back of your mind. It says, so they took Jesus in the boat and started out, leaving the crowds behind. Although other boats followed, but soon a fierce storm came, like the storms in our life, like the storms in our marriages, the storms in our finances. Anybody right now, let's be honest, we are a hot church, humble, open, and transparent. Is anybody going through a storm right now in any area of your life? I got both hands up, okay? All right, thank you, okay? So now... A soon a fierce storm came up. High waves were breaking into the boat, and it began to fill with water. What was what y'all think Jesus was doing? Jesus was sleeping. Now, what does it look like for you to be frantically tripping about the situation, whatever it is, the storm in your life, 
and Jesus is snoring. Like drooling. Y'all know that sleep that you forget, like you wake up and you, th you think you got to fight because you, you don't know where you are. Like some of y'all know about that. Like he was asleep like that. It says he was sleeping in the back of the boat with his head on a pillow. The disciples woke him up shouting, JJ, don't you care about us? We're going to drown. We don't know how to swim. When Jesus woke up, he rebuked the wind and said to the waves, silence, be still. Suddenly the wind stopped and there was a great calm. Then he looked at the disciples and look what he said. Why are you afraid? Now look what he count, contrasted with. Instead of being afraid, do you still have no faith? See, the opposite of faith is fear. Put it up on the screen real quick. I want you to see this because most of us are standing in between fear and faith. And every day we get to wake up, we decide what we're going to focus on. Am I going to put my faith in the thing that looks like it's not going to work out or I'm going to turn my faith and put it into the thing that can change me. Pass me that pillow real quick. Throw me that pillow real fast. I want you to see this real quick that the example that Jesus is saying is while you are frantic in fear, Jesus is sleeping. Oh. Thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit. Uh. He's sleeping in the same place where you're being crazy. He's on the boat with you. And if you're looking at his position when the money doesn't seem like it's going to come in. When it looks like you're not going to qualify for the next semester. When it looks like your family is never going to be healed. What you're doing is you have a pillow and you thought you was going to sleep and you can't. You are. You're trying to figure out what are we going to do? Are we going to drown? And God's saying, if you would follow my posture, if you would have faith in me, I would take you from building your resting place in fear and making a bed in the middle of faith. How's it going to work out, Pastor Mike? I don't know. But he's with me in this boat. And I'm going to, everybody say rest. Well, Pastor Mike, y'all got the building. 10.5 million. You ready to rest? I say, yeah. I was resting before it happened, and now we need another 20 million to be able to make it state of the art because he gave the promise. He's the one told me back there that it was going to work. Why would I move when God does something back into fear? And what's happening is when God blesses you, we got the house. Then what you do is you be like, oh, no, the bills is higher. What's going to happen? And you step back over into fear. He brings you to another place and provides for everything you need. And you're out here in faith. And then one little storm come up. You just start backpedaling. Maybe God didn't say it. I'm just trying to give you a picture of what you live. <laughs> you can be mad at me if you want to, but I'm trying to practically see that maybe God can work in maybe faith. A question you should ask yourself all week is where do I put my pillow? In this situation, where am I putting my pillow? In faith or fear? And so because of that, you got to understand that the spirit that God has given us is not one of fear. Look at 2 Timothy 1.7. It says, for God has not given us a spirit of fear or timidity, but he's given us power, love, and self-discipline or a sound mind. Somebody just needs to say in faith, say, I choose faith. Say it like you mean it. I choose, faith. I choose faith. So I'm about to set some people free right here in my last four minutes. Okay? I want you to hear me say this. The idea of being 100% sure something is God is a lie. 
because most of you are paralyzed because I want to know it's 100% God. Even when pastors and ministers, they're going to probably call me and text me because they don't want me to tell the common people this. But I'm about to tell you all our secrets. When somebody says, I knew it was God that told me to write down the spirit bank of Vince Siller. That's a lie. It maybe was God. And, and, and this is where you have to get beyond, can God use just your maybe faith? I wasn't 100% sure until I signed the papers and got the keys. Then it looked like, oh, God. And I could have got up here and lied to you and said, I knew it was God the whole time. No, it proved to be God. Uh, it proved to be God. I didn't know when I wrote it down. I didn't know. But if I stayed in faith and it lined up with God's will, it proved to be God. And for so long in church, everybody's trying to make you feel like they know. Like, I know this is a word from God. I know this. Let me help you what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 9. It says, for we know in part. And all of y'all that prophesy and all the deep things. And yeah, da, 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 da. You only see in part. And it's not until Jesus comes back that it'll all be made clear. So when I stand up here with my knees shaking and tell you what God is going to do, it's with my maybe faith. Maybe he will, maybe he won't, but I'm going to stand in the place where it won't be because I didn't believe him, that he didn't do it. Let me help you. I live by this principle. Some people ask me, it's like, Pastor Mike, man, I mean, you just got crazy faith. Like, you just be doing things after things, and God just blessing you. I'm 32 years old, and, and we closed on one of the biggest properties in our county, okay? Like, no business school, no, 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 no bank rollers behind us. Like, like just every day when I get up, Come on. I say, Holy Spirit, what do you want me to do today? Jesus. Write down that it's going to be your building. Oh, okay. <laughs> and believe that it can happen. Okay. So, oh, you're not asking me to be 100% sure. You just want me to live at faith past the middle. Like, like, like as long as I'm not looking back in fear and I'm looking forward towards faith, I can see this miracle at 51%. Write it down. Faith at 51%. When, when, when God said we would have the Spirit Bank Event Center, wow. how sure were you, Pastor Mike? 51%. Wow. I wasn't 70. I wasn't 80. I had faith at 51%. And God says, you've crossed over. Wow. You've crossed over in a place where all I need is all you have, and I can work a miracle at 51%. Well, Pastor Mike, they told you your son would never talk, and he would be delayed. You, 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 you could turn... And face fear and doctor's reports and what they say. But this week when I posted on Instagram that my son's going to talk and we're doing, well, hold on. Why would you do that, Pastor Mike, if you don't know? Because my faith had to be vulnerable. Yeah. Like my faith had to get naked and had to say this may not work, but maybe God. Maybe if it's your will. Maybe if you want to do this for me, I'll be one. Hey. That will trust you and believe you. And I'm taking my faith out of fear. I'm taking my life out of fear. And all I got to do is move to 51%. And I'm believing that there's some people in this room that are going to come out of being paralyzed in indecision. And all God's saying is have faith at 51%. Step over. I got to believe. That when Abraham was about to kill Isaac, he wasn't 100% sure that this was the right thing. When he lifted the knife, he was at 51%. He didn't know what was going to happen, but he just knew I had to obey God in faith. He didn't know that right when he was about to do it, bah, a lamb or a sheep or a goat was going to come up. He just had to have faith that if I do this, 
You're going to come through. How do I know? This was his faith in action. Before he went up, he told the servant, me and the boy are going up to worship and we'll both be back. That is faith at 51%. So will I ever be sure that the business is going to work? No. You have to hear from God and you have to put your faith at 51%. I'm no longer in fear and I'm no, no longer paralyzed in indecision. I have stepped over into faith. And I have to believe that was what David had when he went to face Goliath that nobody else had. Trained soldiers are standing here in fear. And all David did was not step to 100% sure that it was going to happen. 51%. Today, I'm asking God to do in you what he did for the woman with the issue of blood. The woman who had dealt in fear from what the doctors had said and from what everybody had given her a bad report. She spent 12 years trying to get healed. And what ended up happening in that moment, <laughs> that she heard Jesus was in the vicinity. She didn't have faith. She wasn't 100% sure. She said, maybe. Maybe if I just touch the hem of his garment. Maybe if I do what nobody else is doing. Maybe if I get close enough to him. He don't even have to pray for me. He don't even have to take me to a side room. It's not even about what he does. It's just, I just need to touch him. And this woman took her faith. Probably didn't get her whole body up there because she was pushing through people. Wow. People who didn't believe it could happen. And she said, if I could just stretch my faith out and just get my mind beyond the halfway point. Her whole body probably wasn't there. But if I could just get my thoughts beyond ah, if I could just think that God could do it. And she touched the hem of his garment and he said, who touched me? And the disciples said, God, what are you talking about? Everybody's touching you. There's a crowd of people. But in a crowd of people, the one that gets what they need, the virtue from Jesus, is the person with faith. He said, I just felt virtue leave me. Because somebody with faith stepped over the line and they had faith at 51 percent and he said woman because of your faith you have been made whole. today I'm believing that for you I'm believing it for everybody watching so what do I do pastor Mike put your faith in motion now Hebrews 11 one says now faith everybody say now, now. What, what, what can I do now you can go have that conversation with the people and find out how much it's going to cost to do the business God placed in your heart. You need no money for research. And, and, and that just moved you from fear to 51%. So some of y'all need to go and you need to get a picture of all your family members who are scattered right now because you guys don't have a good relationship and you need to put them together in a picture and frame it. And every time you see it, you need to say, God's restoring my family. He's bringing my family back to health. And what does that do? That moves you from fear and you step into faith. Standing all over this building. I don't know who you are and what you're going through. But God did not call you to live your Christian life in fear. And the crazy thing is, when you came into this world, you started off at zero and you had enough faith to get saved. And your eternity is secure, but you live your Christian life still in fear. Fear of what they will say, fear of what God might not do it, fear. If this is all a joke and God's saying, would you just trust me? Would you step? And I'm so proud of everybody who did your 15 minutes of faith this week because faith comes by. Hear, and hearing what? The word of God. And so this week, many of y'all have been building, and you went from 30% faith to 45% faith. And now this message, all I'm trying to do is get you over the hump. All I want you to do is believe and step out in 51% faith to this place where maybe God can heal my marriage. Maybe God can take me out of the cycles of poverty and debt. Maybe God, maybe he can, like maybe. And I'm here to tell you that God will work miracles in maybe faith.
hands lifted all over this place. God, I pray for every person under the sound of my voice and watching this, I'm praying that there is a tangible anointing of God that is hitting people's lives right now, that they would move from complacency and fear and they would walk into full faith of what you've called them to do. Father, we will fix our eyes on Jesus and we will look full into his glorious grace. I thank you, Father God, that we are moving forward in what you've called us to do and we cancel the lies of the enemy. And for everybody who's doubted right now, Father, I thank you that that lie, that they're disqualified because they doubt it. I thank you that you're bringing them back to life, knowing that even the Son of Man doubted for a moment, but he didn't rest there. So I'm thanking you that people would pick up their mats and they would walk, that they would pick up their mats where they rested in fear and they will move over to faith. Father, not even crazy faith, not 100%, but God, let us walk in 51%. Let us step over the line. And let us see you move mountains in our life. Today will mark a day of transformation in everyone's life. Because we will move. And we will see you move in maybe faith. In Jesus' name. If you believe it, will you give God? Oh, come on. The biggest shout of praise in this place. Hallelujah. I hope something in you is waking up. That the faith that God has placed you in this earth with, it's time to let it be seen and let his glory be seen through you. Today, if you're in this room and you've never had the faith to just trust God for your salvation, today is the day that you make the greatest decision of your life. It took me from being a liar, addicted to pornography, a bad person on the inside, and it didn't turn me into a perfect man, but a progressing man. And today, I want to offer you that same gift. This is going to take faith, but it's just going to take a little bit. Today, would you close your eyes and bow your head? And if you're in this room and you're saying, Pastor, when you pray in just a moment, I want you to include me in that prayer. I, I want you to raise your hand on the count of three. Uh, there's hands already up right now. Here we go. One, two, three. If that's you, I see you. There's dozens of hands going up. And I know there's even more online. Here, you can put your hand down. I'm so proud of you. Today, as a family, we're going to pray. Transformation Church, we don't pray alone. We're a family here. And we're going to walk this thing out together. Everybody just say, Lord, thank you for sending Jesus. Today, I ask you to save me on a maybe. <laughs> I believe you lived, you died, and you rose again just for me. Today, I'm giving you control. Change me. Renew me transform me i'm yours in jesus name amen can we rejoice with heaven and dozens of people